Hello, my name is Brad Singleton. I have been an ordained pastor for the past 20 plus years. My grandfather was a pastor for 30 plus years and my great great grandfather was actually a circuit riding preacher. So I come from a long line of preachers. Today I want to tell you why I as a pastor stopped believing what the Bible says. So I was taught my whole life to believe, to believe in this book. Let me grab it for you real quick. This book, I was taught to believe that this was the foundation for my faith. That was until I had a forever life-altering experience, which started to talk me out of it. I'm going to get to that in just a minute. But I was taught my entire life blind faith that you just believe what this book says doesn't ma matter how illogical it sounds doesn't matter how ridiculous it sounds doesn't matter how anti-science it sounds you just believe it brother you don't doubt it you don't question it you just believe you have blind faith see i was raised in sunday school my my entire life and i was taught to believe that this book was the foundation of my faith. That was, I said, until I had an experience that's forever changed me. See, as a teenager, we were going out and we were street witnessing. We were trying to convince other people to become Christians just like us. And I remember interacting with a young man and he asked me a very, very pointed question. He said, why do you believe what the Bible says is true? I was speechless. I had no answer <laughs> because that was the answer for everything for me. What was that answer? Let me let me show you. the The answer for everything was this: the Bible says so. That was my answer for everything. Well, well, what else did I need besides well, the Bible says so? Well, why do you believe in seven-day creation? Well, the Bible says so. Well, why do you believe in Noah and the ark? Well, the Bible says so. Well, why do you believe in, in Moses and, and the parting the Red Sea and, and David and Goliath? Why do you believe any of that? Well, because the Bible says so. But then all of a sudden I was asked a question for which this answer didn't make any sense. But that was the only answer I had. His question was, why, why do you believe the Bible is true? And my answer was, because the Bible says it's true. And that guy just ripped me to shreds. He said, do you realize that is the stupidest answer I've ever heard in my life? So do you believe everything you see on television because they tell you it's true? Do you believe everything you read because they just tell you it's true? Is that really enough for you? It began to shake and erode my faith because I had no answer for that. None. I, I tried to bury it. I tried to pretend like that wasn't there. I tried to move on because the Bible was my foundation of faith. I had no other. I had nothing else. So then I began to turn to another foundation of faith, which I also taught was very valid as well. If it wasn't the Bible, it was this. It was my experience. So I, I felt things. I experienced things. When I, when I prayed, when I talked to God, when I went to church, I, I felt feelings that must prove that the Bible is true, right? Well, years later, I began to interact with Mormon missionaries. I didn't believe that their faith was true. I didn't believe that what they taught was true. I didn't believe that it was based upon reality or facts and I remember asking them, why do you believe it's true? And they said, well, because we've, we've had an experience. Well, I couldn't argue with their experience, but yet they were believing something totally different than what I was. And their experience was telling them that what they believed were true. My experience was telling me what I believed was true. So this became very, very subjective for me. I needed something else. I needed something more objective, something factual, something that wasn't subjective, something that could be argued from, again, evidence, not faith. So I began to go on a journey. 
And I began to find out what I thought for so long was the foundation of my faith wasn't actually the foundation of my faith at all. Because, see, I'd been taught my whole life that this book was the foundation of my faith. I began to find out, find out that that wasn't true at all. And it began to shake me. I began to question. I began to be a very, very comfortable. And I began to find out what I th forever thought was the foundation of my faith wasn't actually the foundation of my faith in the first place. Whether you're a Christian or not, you need to understand this. Do you realize that the seven-day creation is not the foundation of the Christian faith? Whether or not the Bible was – the earth was created in seven days is not the foundation of our faith. That's not the foundation of Christianity. Whether or not Adam and Eve were real people is not the foundation of the Christian faith. Whether or not Noah and the ark and the worldwide flood ever happened, do you realize that that is not – the basis of the Christian faith, Abraham and Isaac, that's not the foundation of the Christian faith. Moses and, and the Israelites and all those crazy stories that we heard about the parting of the Red Sea. Do you realize that, that whether or not that actually happened is not the foundation of the Christian faith? David and Goliath, all those stories that we were taught as little kids, do you realize whether or not those things actually happened is irrelevant to the foundation of the Christian faith? faith because I was taught my whole life that these things were true and it was assumed that that was the basis of my faith and it felt to me like this book was this huge house of cards and all someone had to do was poke on one of those cards and whoosh, the whole thing just began to crumble and fall apart but I began to go on a journey I began to go on a search and ask harder questions so if those weren't the foundation of my faith because this is what I don't think I got See, in this book, we have what's called the Old Testament and the New Testament. The Old Testament is the Hebrew scriptures, the foundation of the Jewish faith. But forever I was taught that that was part of the foundation of my faith. Jesus actually came along and he gave us something totally new. The foundation of my faith is not whether or not any of these stories are true. See, because the Christianity began to spread all throughout the known world in the first 300 years after the death of Christ. And it was not based upon here. Read this book and believe. Because, see, that's when I interacted with Mormon missionaries, that's what they taught me. They, they gave me the Book of Mormon. They said, read this. Ask the Holy Spirit if it's true. And if you get a burning in your bosom, then it's true. Do you realize that's not the way that Christianity spread across the world in 300 years? It was not based upon a book. It was not based upon, hey, here, believe this. I, I don't know if I ever was taught that. I don't know if I ever heard that. And when I began to research this and find this out to be true, it changed everything for me. It wasn't based upon a book. So here's the, here's the beauty of that. First of all, for me as a Christian, once you understand what your faith is really founded upon, you can poke holes all day long in the seven-day creation. It doesn't affect my faith. You can poke holes all day on, long whether Adam and Eve were real people. If no one in the ark and the worldwide flood happened, David and Goliath, Moses, Abraham, you can poke holes in all of it. And it doesn't crumble the foundation of the Christian faith because that is not the foundation of the Christian faith. Paul actually told us what the foundation of the Christian faith was. He told us in 1 Corinthians. He said, if Christ has not been raised from the dead, our preaching is useless and your faith is useless. So here what I come to tell you today in this video. The foundation of the Christian faith is not a book. It's an event. It's the event of whether or not Jesus Christ actually died and he rose from the dead. Now, no reputable scholar believes that Jesus didn't actually exist. There's some wackos, some fringe people out there that will, will propose that theory. But no reputable scholar believes that Jesus wasn't a real person. There's just overwhelming evidence. Historical, archaeological, there's overwhelming evidence that Jesus actually lived that he was actually nailed to a cross and that his followers actually believe that three days later he came back to life. There's overwhelming evidence 
for that. So that, my friends, is much more verifiable than well, the Bible says, or my experience told me so. That is much more verifiable because it's based upon what? Not an experience, but evidence. Evidence. And if I tell if I told you I heard from God yesterday and he told me something that will forever change your life, you'd be like, well, I'm not so sure about that. But if I told you, you no, know, God actually came in physical form, had lunch with me and three of my friends and actually go and help me build a tree house. That's a story that you can somehow go and verify. You could go talk to those witnesses. You could go examine the tree house that I said that he's built. You could do something to try to prove my story or disprove my story. Couldn't you? Absolutely. Do you realize that the foundation of the Christian faith is the exact same way? It's not based upon a book. It's not based upon a book. It's based upon an event. So you can try to poke holes in this book all you want. It doesn't change whether or not an event actually happened. See, I could get, I could propose, I could bring a piece of paper to you right today, today, and it's my birth certificate. And I could say, see, I exist because of this birth certificate. That birth certificate doesn't prove that I exist. And actually, there could be lots of errors in that birth certificate. And it wouldn't, just by finding errors in the birth certificate, wouldn't disprove my existence at all. No, see, the birth certificate exists because of my birth. So the eyewitness accounts that we have in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, they exist because of an event. Christianity doesn't exist because of the Bible. The Bible exists because of Christianity. And so it all hinges upon what Paul just said. Either Jesus Christ died, was buried, and rose again, or he wasn't. Now, not very many people dispute the fact that he was nailed to a cross. <laughs> it's the supernatural. It's the miracles. It's the miracle of him coming back to life. Now, that's what it all hinges upon. So that is why I, as a pastor, stopped believing the Bible says so was the foundation of my faith. The Bible says so is not the foundation of my faith in Jesus Christ. The foundation of my faith is an event. Either Jesus Christ rose from the dead or he didn't. Because what can't be denied what cannot be denied is the massive change that happened in his disciples. His disciples, when Jesus was nailed to the cross, were hiding and fearful for their lives. But then what cannot be denied is that something happened that so forever changed them that every single one of them, with the exception of Judas, was willing to go and die for something that they said they saw with their own eyes, heard with their own ears, touched with their own hands. They said, we have seen this to be true. We've experienced it for ourselves. See, the Christian faith spread across the world because of a book. No, 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 no. Because of an event and because eyewitnesses says, I saw him die and I had breakfast with him on the beach three days later. Now, you can come up with all kinds of reasons for why they said that, but what cannot be denied is that they believed it was true so much so that every single one of them were willing to die a martyr's death for something, not, not a book, not a belief system, but because of an event. So today I challenge you to ask yourself the question, what happened? What happened that so radically changed these men? They were forever willing, they were willing to die, not for their faith, but for an event. That is why I, as a pastor, stopped believing what the Bible says. That's not the foundation of my faith. It's actually something so much better than that. So I'm going to challenge you, whether or not you're a Christian or not, but if this is strike the chord in you and it makes you want to dig deeper i'm going to challenge you i'm going to actually be producing another video here in the next few weeks that we're going to be giving some evidence why i believe the event of the resurrection of jesus christ actually happened so i'm going to ch challenge you to check out that video but also in the meantime i'm going to challenge you to do some other research as well there's a book out by andy stanley i do not get any kickback if you go out and buy this book but i'm going to challenge you to do it irresistible by andy stanley I want to challenge you to go out and get that book.
Maybe you can just do a Google search. What is the evidence for the resurrection of Jesus Christ? Because the foundation of our of my faith as a Christian is not a book. It's an event. The event of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Well, guys, thanks so much for joining me today. Thanks so much for liking, sharing this video, and subscribing to the YouTube channel. Thanks for joining me today for why I, as a pastor, decided to no longer believe what the Bible says.